Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's uh, parent webinar. Tonight, we're going to talk about things parents can do at home, all about gross motor skills. I'm Johan van Lil, and I'm the coordinator of the Kiro Learner Support Unit. I like the subtitle of Every Hop, Skip and Jump is a step towards growing up strong and smart. Tonight, we're going to talk about the, the relationship between your brain activity, your brain capacity, and how your brain develop um, through uh, gross motor skills. Something that we sometimes overlook and we don't connect it with being smart and, and, and how it will help your child's brain to develop. So how do gross motor skills root a child's development? Now, imagine a tree, robust and sturdy, reaching skyward with a vast canopy of leaves. The roots of this tree are like a child's gross motor skills, anchoring the tree in rich soil and providing the essential foundation for its growth. Just as the roots draw nutrients and water to nourish the tree, gross motor skills fuel a child's brain development by enabling exploration, movement, and interaction with the world and the environment. These gross motor skills are the first to sprout like the primary roots of a sapling, and they form the base upon which the finer skills, akin to the delicate branches and leaves, will later develop. As a tree roots support, as a tree's roots support the trunk and branches, allowing them to withstand winds and weather, gross motor skills underpin cognitive abilities and higher order functions. And they also allow a child to navigate the environment, of, of which we know plays such a big and important role in brain development, which in turn stimulates the brain, much like the roots stimulate growth by absorbing water and nutrients from the soil. In the same way that a tree with deep, strong roots can grow to great heights, a child with well-developed gross motor skills has the potential to reach high levels of cognitive and ad ac academic achievement. And these skills lay the groundwork for a lifetime of learning just as the roots support the tree through its many seasons of growth. I always say that gross motor skills are the little nest in which you pack all these important academic skills. And I also had a lecturer at Cambridge who always said that, that gross motor skills are the super or the highways in the brain. And if you, if you don't develop those highways through the gross motor skills, it's very difficult for the brain then to fully develop because he said the brain is all about connectivity and gross motor skills play a huge role in developing the, the connectivity in the brain. So what are gross motor skills? Think of them as the big movements that use the large muscles in your child's arms and legs and torso. And, and they, these are the skills that help your child to, to do things like running, jumping, playing, crawling, falling, uh, all those things that are important. For me, one of the biggest milestones in a child's life if they can run and jump and play, because that tells me so much about um, their brain development, sometimes more than cognitive skills at an early age. So why are these skills so, so important? So um, just like building blocks, these skills are the foundation for more complex skills your child will learn later. And they help with everyday tasks and play a big role in your child's independence. Plus, they are great for keeping your child fit and active, for, and that's good for their hearts and their, and their muscles. It, help, it also helps your child think and learn, and a lot of movement uh, means a lot of learning. Playing with friends is super important for learning social skills and boosting confidence. And there's nothing like learning to hop, skip or jump to make your child feel like a superhero. 
But for me, I think the most important role that gross motor skills plays is fueling the connectivity in the brain. Um, the same lecture that I had at Cambridge always said that when a child is born, their brains are like a block of marble and the environment and the experiences and early gross motor experiences are like the the chisel of a of a sculpture and that shapes the brain so um and that connectivity develops a lot through 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 uh, gross motor skills so gross motor skills activate uh, and help to strengthen neural pathways, those super highways that we need for later uh, reading and writing and cognitive and academic skills. Um, people always think, but why do children need to play? Through play and through a lot of gross motor skills, these super highways in the brain and the communication in the brain and the connectivity in the brain develops. It's also important through gross motor skills and playing all the unnecessary connections in the brains brain gets pruned and we call it pruning it takes away those connections that we don't need and don't use children with a very passive lifestyle who are not engaging in gross motor skills sometimes go to school with too many connections in their brains because the gross motor skills did not prune away those connections that they that they don't need because connectivity contributes to more efficient brain function and then it also plays a big role in cerebellum activation um, it's vital for motor control so is highly activated during mo a gross motor task and this part of the brain also plays a role in cognitive processes like attention and language so Many people think, why do we do these things with children? It is to develop attention. It is to develop language. These are the things that are important. And that's why we don't teach children to read at such a young age, because we are working for the underlying skills, the emergency skills that they will need later um, for that. So that's why these things are so important. And then also gross motor skills plays a huge role in brain, brain plasticity. And plasticity is a new, um, not new, but it's it's a re relatively um, new in terms of, of our knowledge of the brain, where we know that functions can move around in the brain and gross motor skills promote neuroplasticity and the brain's ability to adapt and reorganize itself. So early childhood is a critical period for developing, uh, for preparing and developing these neural connections, but preparing the brain for uh, plasticity, which is very, very important. And then also coordination in the brain and communication. So gross motor activities often require bilateral coordination and getting bo both brain hemispheres to communicate effectively. Bilateral integration is very, very important for communication in the brain. Um, that's why swimming, crawling, um, jumping on a trampoline, all those things are so important because they all help for bilateral um, um, integration and coordination. And this is crucial for tasks such as walking and running and other activities that really require balance and coordination. And then executive functioning enhancement, although this is only developing later in life, the super highways for when a teenager needs to develop these skills, the super highway needs to be in place very early in life. So gross motor skills can really improve executive functions like some things like working memory, flexible thinking and self-control. So these are the super highways that the child will need later in life. When we talk about uh, motor skills development, there's an experiment that we that that we need to discuss because it, it had such a big impact. It was done in the 1960s and it was done by Rosenweif and Bennett and Diamond and they did it in the 1960s where they wanted to determine that what can we do to stimulate a child to be better, to, to develop better. And people took this experiment out of context 
banks and made gazillions of money with it. So what they did with this experiment was they had two cages with with rats in it. In the one cage, they only put the one rat in it um, with only food, no nothing to do. So it was a non stimulating environment. It was just the rat in a cage, nothing. And then the other one looked like this one. Lots of social interaction, lots of things to do, little wheels and things for the rats to play. And then after a while, they, as scientists do, they they killed the rats and they looked at their brains under under the microscopes and they found that the rats with the with the lot of stimulation had much more connections and white matter and clearly was a more developed brain than the one who, who did not get any stimulation. And then they made this quite interesting um, um, uh, I can't find the word now, which they kind of concluded to, to say, if you stimulate a child, because if you stimulate a rat, it should be ironically also a part of children, um, which is funny, um, but if you stimulate a child, then their brains will improve and be better, which was then something that led to many of these educational um, equipment that was developed and a lot of extra stuff because we wanted to make our children smarter and we went into that era of if the sooner the better which is which is not great uh, it they had all these things that we need to stimulate children to be smarter and then after a while uh, quite a few decades later, somebody else also kept these records and then they killed the little rat that was just a normal rat in nature. And they look at that brain and it looked exactly the same like the brain of the rats in the, in the stimulated cage. So what they found was that stimulation is only there if it is a natural environment. So this stimulated environment was just a natural environment because the two brains looked exactly the same. But what came from that conclusion is what is essential for us when we start talking about gross motor skills. So what they actually concluded with this experiment was that stimulation is not as important for children because living in an environment where they can play, where they can run, where they can interact, where there's enough language, that is a normal environment. Stimulation is part of that normal environment. It can't really enhance you more. It is just the normal environment and it has about a 80% impact on the development of the brain. What is essential from the study was that deprivation is the one thing that we need to look for. So when there's deprivation, like where the rat was without any stimulation, that is harmful. So in the context of gross motor skills, if the child gets a lot of gross motor skills and they, and they have enough a stimulation where they play and they do play-based learning and they, they run around and they can do very a lot of gross motor skills. That's the normal environment for a child's brain. But if they grow up, we they have a very passive lifestyle, that's deprivation. If they don't move enough, that's deprivation. And that has a very negative impact on a child's brain. So gross motor skills and the opportunities to have gross motor skills available to kids is the natural environment. And that's one of the reasons why Kiro is so um, pushing play-based learning because play it, and it includes a lot of gross motor skills. And through that, we create the optimal environment for children then to develop optimally. We, we, we don't have a deprived, so if your child is in a, in a preschool where there's not a place where they can run around and play, then that's a deprived environment. At Kiro, we make enough space for them so that they can have a normal um, environment where they, they can then grow and develop like what is the normal environment for brains. So 
This slide is titled Understanding the Basics of Gross Motor Development. So this slide shows the fundamental components of gross motor development in children. And this is a critical area of growth that underpins many aspects of a child's future learning and physical activity. So let's look at the core elements. The first one um, is core strength. And think of this as the engine room of the body. It provides stability and supports all bodily movements. And from maintaining an upright position to walking and running, core strength is the foundation for all the motor skills a child will develop. If we move on to the balance, Balance is the skill that allows us to maintain a controlled body position during task performance. And this includes both static balance, which is when we are not moving, like standing on one leg, and dynamic balance, which is when we are moving, like walking on a balance beam. And it's essential not just for everyday activities, but also for more complex physical endeavors. So, and then next up is coordination, which is another critical fundamental um, component. Um, and this is about the smooth and efficient movement patterns that our bodies perform. Coordination is what allows a child to synchronize their, move, their movements, like using their hands and eyes together to catch a ball. It's an, an intricate dance between different body parts that allows for complex motor tasks. And lastly, we have muscle tone. Muscle tone refers to the natural tension in the muscles, which is necessary for maintaining posture and facilitating movement. And it's not about the strength or the size of the muscles, but rather its readiness for actions. And each of these components, core strength, balance, coordination, and muscle tone, are the building blocks of gross motor development. Together, they lay the groundwork that supports the child's ability to navigate their environment effectively. And this, in turn, stimulates their brain development and sets the stage for future cognitive and academic achievement. For you as a parent, you don't have to think about these things because the games and the stuff I'm going to recommend tonight are things that integrate all these things because your job is not to think now, what am I going to do for this and what am I going to do for that? Your job is just to play with your child, to create opportunities where your child can move, where your child can climb and run and do all those things. So, but this is good for us as parents to understand these fundamental components. And then also, you, you read so much about developmental milestones. For me, they are important, but I look at it from a different way as a, as a professional. But for me, the message I always give to parents, especially in the first five years of a child's life, is that each child's timeline may vary. Each child develop at their own pace. Um, when you look at milestones, they are just little boxes that we tick. It's not the when that's important. It is important that they will happen. Um, if they happen at one year or three years, it's not as important, that, but let, they must happen at some point during the first five years of a child's life. So again, your child is unique. Your child will develop at their own pace. Um, and if you play and give them a lot of attention, if you nurture them, you're doing the right things. And that's what is important. And that's also what is expected from children. So let's look at understanding again um, the things that if you would like to, to observe your child. So it's always good to, to recognize the signs of strong um, gross motor skills. So usually a child with strong gross motor skills will have confidence in their movements. They will be eager to explore and the ability to navigate new physical challenges. If there are concerns, there's usually a hesitancy in movement, difficulty with age appropriate physical tasks, and a lot of the time a preference for a more passive or sedentary uh, lifestyle or activities. So Children with gross motor difficulties may face a variety of challenges like delayed milestones. Children may take longer to reach development stages such as sitting and crawling and walking and jumping. And this can be a sign of gross motor issues and can impact their ability 
to engage in age-appropriate activities. Um, so there are people who are working with this specifically, uh, child's kinetitis, they are really, really good with helping with these kind of uh, activities. And there are also physiotherapists that are specializing in working with children, especially when there are delayed milestones. Um, difficulty with tasks that require balance, like standing on one foot, coordination, like catching a ball, may become apparent. And this can lead to challenges in sports and physical games, affecting social interactions and self-esteem. Low muscle tone, we get genetic low muscle tone, you get genetic high muscle tone, but then you also get muscle tone issues that is uh, linked to a passive lifestyle. Muscle tone, in essence, are the messages you get from your from your muscles to your brain. Um, it's part of your um, proprioceptive system as well as your interoceptive system, and it is sending messages to the brain. Children with low muscle tone gets a lot of messages um, that they also have to accommodate, and that's why it's difficult sometimes for them to complete their task or to sit still for a long time. So it's important that. That we that we also think about muscle tone because the 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 symptoms for low muscle tone sometimes look exactly the same as the symptoms that you would associate with something like ADHD. So muscle tone is one of the things that your professional will look at um, when they when there are concerns about focus and impulse control and um, concentration and those kind of things. And then difficulty of locomotion, struggling with movement skills such as running, hopping and skipping can make it hard for children to keep up with their peers during play. Um, again, they will reach those milestones at their own pace. And then motor planning is also something that you will see your, your um, ECD facilitator will give you lots of feedback on the ability to conceive, uh, to conceive a plan, make carrying out what they want to do. Um, do things in the correct sequence um, and sometimes if that's not in place they may struggle to learn new physical tasks and then sometimes gross motor skills will also have an impact on their posture um, sometimes they will avoid physical play um, and they may have challenges with your daily living skills um, they need it for things like dressing and bathing and feeding so children with ghost motor issues may find these tasks more challenging and due to lower muscle tone and endurance children with gross motor challenges may tire more quickly and then they will lie down or they will need some support they might always find something to lean against or hold to um, and that will have an impact on their participation and their engagement and it will have social implications as well. So children with gross motor difficulties may face a variety of challenges. It has an impact on their academics. Um, that's why it's so important that we will give lots of attention to this in the early childhood years um, because it has a direct impact on their academic performance later in life. It also has an impact on, on their weight. Um, as you know, that South Africa is really battling with overweight uh, children who are overweight in very early years. Um, so being passive is, is really one of the challenges for that. And then spatial awareness is also something that, uh, and especially during COVID and after COVID, that many children have now trouble with spatial awareness. They need that to, to do maths. They need that for spelling. They need that to write from the board. They need that for planning. Um, they need to that for um, when they organize their desk or when they pick up something that they might look clumsy or have lots of accidents um, uh, when knocking things over, that kind of thing. And then again, um, it may also, if they have gross motor difficulties and challenges, may lead to reduced confidence in, and motivation. And then it sometimes also tie up with sensory processing issues. We talked about senses last week and it can have an effect on that as well. So what is your role as a parent in fostering this development? I think from showing how to kick a ball to holding their hands as they take their first steps, parental involvement can really provide the necessary guidance and motivation. 
So for me, it's important that you will craft a supportive environment. Create a home environment that is both safe and stimulating to encourage practice and exploration. Create areas with the space you have. We, we, we don't all have big spaces, but use the space that you have um, so that there's enough space for them to explore and to move. And this includes child proving spaces for safe movement, uh, providing diverse physical play options and ensuring that the home environment is free from undue stress and, and, and distractions. And then I think parents have the power of encouragement. So consistent encouragement and positive reinforcement can really enhance a child's self-esteem and willingness to engage in and persist with new activities and model this to your child um, and do it with your child. So celebrating the effort in a growth mindset uh, concept rather than the achievement helps instill a growth mindset where children really view the challenges as opportunities to learn and improve. So if they don't have your ball sense, um, then it's a it's an opportunity for for growth mindset. Then you celebrate the effort for them by trying to do it. Um, trying to kick the ball um, and recognize the effort because they're just not there yet. It's not, it doesn't mean they're not going to get there. It's just they're still on their way to get there. And then also fit it into your routine um, and fit it into their routine. So sneak it in um, somewhere in their program. Uh, uh, and I always call this the like the French diet where you they 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 take the stairs instead of the lift. Um, they move a lot. They they try to to bring in movement wherever they can, especially with their children, because people in France and I, I stayed there for a while, um, they stay in small apartments and there's not a lot to do there so they they bring in movement wherever they can so because they know gross motor skills are so important for their children's development it's about making movements a natural and fun part of your family's routine that you can all look forward to and then how often and long is the question i always get a little goes a long way so aim for bursts of activity that add up to about an hour a day. If you can get up to an hour, it's great. Whether it's a 10 minute walk to the shop, if you can, or in a shopping mall, or a 15 minute game of tag, or uh, it all counts up. But if you can get at least to one hour uh, with your child, it, it will really be great. And re remember regular short sessions can just be as good as one long one so so fit it in wherever you can and when you can and if you need to use a spreadsheet just to calculate it do that some people just need that to be to keep themselves accountable for it and then keep things fresh and fun whatever you do with your children when it comes to development should be fun it should be playful it should be something that you both enjoy if you don't enjoy it or your kid don't enjoy it then why do it so keep your kids on their toes with a variety of activities from Saturday morning bike rides to after school swimming and swimming is a wonderful um, activity for children, especially when it comes to gross motor skills um, and different activities will activities will not only work um, different muscles, but also keep everyone's interest alive and you can even let the kids take turns choosing the activity. Um, you might be surprised by their creativity. Now, how do we navigate the ups and downs um, of keeping um, kids, oh, sorry, there's a typo, keeping kids active? Um, so how do you tackle that resistance? We all have those days when the little ones just don't want to join in. Um, turn resistance into participation by making activities a game or part of a story. Who can hop like a kangaroo the longest or can we all move like robots to tidy the room? 
Sometimes it's about choice, offered options, and let your child take the lead. It's amazing how enthusiasm grows when they are in charge, because when you give them options, you give them a bit of control, and that usually stimulates uh, a lot of participation. And adapting to all abilities. Every child is unique, and so is their way of moving. If an activity seems too tricky for them, break it down into simpler steps, or try a different one that achieves the same goal, a race might become a walk or a jump might start as a slip. And celebrate progress, not, perf not perfection. Focus on how much fun you're having rather than how well an activity is performed. And then inclusive play, when it comes to play, everyone should be invited to the party. So look for activities that can be enjoyed by all children, regardless of their abilities. This might mean using larger balls so that they can catch it, or maybe more heavier balls so that they bounce a bit slower, creating wider paths for wheelchairs, or having non-verbal cues for children who are, communicate differently. So if you're unsure, seek advice from your specialists. And they are really, I can re recommend all child's kineticus. They are really great with this. And they have special classes who really, really help children to, um, to develop their gross motor skills. And they are also great physiotherapists, but they are also um, OTs who specialize in this. So um, most OTs specialize in fine motor skills, but a lot of them are also trained to, to do this and, and to, to provide the service to you. So navigating the risk of a passive, passive lifestyle and a child's development, we are now raising the very, um, phone bound social media a group of kids so passive lifestyle is it was a crisis 20 years ago but it's now a big crisis um, because passive lifestyle there's the muscle development stagnates which is really really a big problem it's a big uh, and it, it compromises posture and balance and muscle tone um, it has really cognitive consequences because active play stimulates brain growth and neural connections and neural pruning and those things are not happening and then children goes to school they go to school without the necessary pruning um, so it also limits their sensory experiences that are crucial for the brain to learn how to react on the senses and the information that the senses are sending to the brain. It has a big impact on their social skills um, because limited physical engagement can lead to decreased opportunities for social learning. It has an emotional impact because active play is linked to positive emotions and stress relief. A passive lifestyle can reduce the natural mood enhancing effect of regular movement. And remember, when you are moving, your brain secretes amazing hormones that are giving you energy, make you feel better and have lots of positiveness uh, in your brain. So it is a it's a very important aspect. So I'm going to give you 50 ideas for gross motor skills that you can do at home and I'm going to run through all of them. So. We all know about the obstacle course and most of these ideas you know. So I'm just going to remind you of them. And if you can try one every week of the year, then I will be delighted. So create a simple obstacle course using furniture and pillows. You know that game so well. You did it as a child. Balloon, volleyball, keep a balloon in the air using your hands and feet. And then we also know all about the beanbag toss, toss the beanbags into the, la the laundry basket or boxes and the children need to find it. I like this one. This is what the picture is about. You can create bottles. We all have these bottles um, and you can fill them with different things um, and you can use different things to then to play uh, bowling with them. Um, and throwing and there's lots of things that you can do. You can use different, you can water, you can watercolor, you can, you can make it very interesting. Um, so that can work very well. 
and then blow bubbles and have children pop them using different body parts. So they can pop it with their elbows, they can pop it with their knees, they can pop it with their toes. Um, just remember we want them, the, the bigger muscles need to be moved. So you don't want them to pop it with their fingers because that's fine motor skills. You would rather like them to box it or you want them to kick it. You would like them to, to use their bigger muscles for a change. And then animal walks, crab walk, bear walk, any kind of animal you can think of. Do that, do that with your children. Uh, it's also a good exercise for you. Put on some music and dance freely around the living room. You can even dance in your car with your kids, play music, and they can move their upper bodies uh, and strengthen that. Uh, the picture here is um, that you use tape to create an indoor hopscotch grid, especially if you live in a in a space that is not that big. You can make this indoor and um, you can remove it after a while because you would also like to change it every now and then. That is actually very, very um, important for children. Hula hoops are amazing for children. You can do so many things with that from jumping in and out, jump through it and use all the vocabulary that goes through it. But even just you know, turning the hula hoop is also a very good skill for them. If you have access to yoga for your kids, it has so many advantages. I can do a whole talk just on how beneficial yoga is for kids. So if you have access to that, have maybe have a yoga club for kids in your area, take them, you will not be sorry. Um, skipping rope, very important for bilateral integration for many, many things. It's an integrated activity and there are many ways that you can do it. And then balancing activities, walking along a line of tape on the floor, you can put a rope on the floor, you can put Maybe you can put some whatever you have. It's all about just balancing activities. And then the picture is a wheelbarrow walk. You can even see there's a little bean back on her back so that she needs to balance that as well. It kind of helps you to 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 develop the shoulder girdle um, and you they need to. This is a very good exercise to prepare them for for writing and for the hand the for the the, the hand grip when they need to 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 write. Um, and then just jumping into a pile of pillows is a good thing. Uh, using the stairs, I already talked about that. Um, crawling races, have racing crawling on hands and knees or anything that they can. Um, I like these sack races where you use pillowcases or anything that they need to put their feet in and you can do that. Um, sofa cushion climb where you st stack the cushions and they need to climb over it. Um, this is a picture of the blanket pool. Uh, if you have an old blanket, they need to get on it and somebody pull it and you get on it. They pull you on the floor. It doesn't work well on a carpet, but it works well on any other floor. Um, and then do some target practices where they throw soft balls or stuff, soft in animals into a basket. Remember, it's all about the, the bigger muscles that need to move. Um, Simon says, very good, you know that game so well. Indoor soccer, use a softball to kick or you can use a pair of socks that you, you can, oh, there's so many things that you can use that they can, that they can kick that will not uh, knock over anything and you can make a goal out of boxes or crates or whatever you have. Um, jumping jacks is a wonderful activity. Parachute play is where you use a bed sheet as a parachute to lift and lower, so you kind of lift it up and take it up. There's lots of control in there. And then a tug of war, you can use a rope, a towel, uh, many different things where you can use and where you can have a gentle tug of war with your child and pull them over. I like this laser maze and I've done this with my child, which is really fun. Um, you can create this maze with strings and have kids navigate through without touching the strings. So you, you make a game out of it and they really like it and they, it's an adventure and you make them special agents. They really like that kind of thing. Give them a special mission to work through it. They must go under and through and all those things. Um, and they need to plan how they're going to get through. Um, also use tape on the floor as, a, as also a line without stepping off the line. Um, again, uh, what I like about statues is that you play music, stop the music, and they need to freeze in that position. Play music, stop the music, freeze in that position. 
Um, you can also do it where the floor is lava. Um, you need to navigate the room climbing on different things, but you can't touch the floor. Um, and then giant steps, take the biggest step possible around the room. Um, long jumps work well, pillowcase slides, sit on a pillowcase and slide down the stairs with supervision. Uh, basketball, any activity with the ball, any activity with the ball is brilliant. So try and do that, you all know that. Um, this one you just need to be careful because some children might get anxious where you roll them up in a blanket and they need to wiggle themselves free. Some children might get anxious, so um, just keep an eye and, and be there to, 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 to save them if necessary. You can also use ribbons or scarves to make last flowing movements. Um, like a ribbon twirl, which also works well. Um, and then you get these bubble wrap stomp where you lay out bubble wrap to pop with your feet, you pop it with your elbows, you pop it with your bum, you pop it with your head. So there are many different ways to do that. And then you can also set up empty cans and kick a ball to knock them over. And then I like these relay races where you organize a few stations and they need to do a task at each station that is different. They really love this and they do that at school as well, but you can do it at home with the stuff you have. And then also cushion carry, carry heavy cushions to build strength, um, act out various um, sports games without the equipment. So you play tennis without the ball and the record. You play it with what you have. You play cricket without that lots of fun and children love that it's just being funny and having fun um trampoline if you can get them if you have them i know children are not um they do it in the beginning a lot but then they stop doing it but it's a good thing for them uh lie flat crawl using elbows and twos that army crawl that you all know um and then Juggling with scarves, where they literally do the scarves, which is also a little bit slower because that is easier than using balls. So they will throw the scarves. It, it just come down uh, easier. So they experience more success with that. And then what is also nice is we, and it's for a little bit older children, but you can you can do it even with numbers where they create these shapes with their bodies. So they need to create an A and a B and a C by just using their bodies. They can even create animals or whatever is age appropriate at that time. Building a fort, you all done it when you were kids, do it with your kids. Scavenger hunts, um, also something that you did as a kid, remember about that. Um, and then also stuffed animal rescues, you hide the stuffed animals and they need to find them and return them to a safe zone. I've used it a lot within with those mazes that I kind of stick in the passage and they I put the animals and they need to save all the, the animals. Uh, puddle jumping, if you have a garden, jump over real imaginary puddles and all those things. And then I always say go if you can, if you have the uh, opportunity uh, go into nature, um, go for a walk outside if possible um, to collect natural items. I just want to include some activities for low muscle tone because we see it so often with passive and this is not for genetic low muscle tone. This is where children just have low muscle tone because of a, a passive lifestyle. They, ju they just don't move enough. So you can do things like wall push-ups where you find a clear space and you just push against it. It really helps with the upper body muscles. And don't be like a gym instructor. These things should be fun. Um, it should still be playful. So it's not about technique and all of that. Just do this as part of the play. Have them carry heavy stuff. Um, let them push furniture around. Um, incorporate a game where children squat to pick up toys and then reach up to the place uh, the, to place them on higher on higher surfaces. An activity like watering plants is a really good activity. Children love playing with water. Uh, any push and, and pull play activity um, that require them to push or pull like using a, a toy shopping cart or a wagon loaded with items or a, a wheelbarrow. What any push and pull play helps with muscle tone. Um, if you can some, have something in the in a in your doorway that they can hang and, and which is strong enough that will not break, it works well as well. Um, and then if you make homemade dough and you make it quite tight, 
all those squeezing of the homemade and, and stretching of that is also great for shoulder girdle and arms development. And then chores with a twist, add a muscle strengthening element to chores like wiping windows in wide circular motions, or you can you can include that in chores. Um, leg lifts are in different ways, helps a lot, especially for the core and for your tummy muscles. Um, and then put some books and they need to walk with that. Um, sit and stand using a small stool where children must stand up and sit down multiple times in a row. Curl in press, you use light household items as weights for arm curls and overhead presses. Again, should be age appropriate, should be fun, should be a game. It can also be them imitating you, whatever you can think up. Step ups, use the bottom step of a staircase or a sturdy low stool to do step up exercises. Uh, tummy time with a twist for younger children, encourage extended tummy time with toys just out of reach to encourage them stretching and strengthening um, towards that. Um, airplane lifts, lying on your stomach, lift your arms and legs off the ground, holding the position and to strengthen the, the back muscles. And then laundry basket fishing is also a good activity. Fill a laundry basket with clothes, then have children using a, a grabber to fish out items using their arms and their core muscles. I also like this rolling relay, roll across the floor using the whole body from one side of the room to the other. Uh, shadow boxing, where you teach them basic control boxing moves without contacting for a full body workout. And then towel twisting is a great one. Let them help you to, to dry out the, uh, the towels for them to wring it. That's very good activities for, for lots of, of the muscles and it's a very integrated activity. Those are the 20 ideas. So if there are any questions, you can type the questions in the Q&A section of this uh, webinar. I'm going to check that just now if there are any questions. Remember, I'm sending this um, this uh, PowerPoint deck to your uh, kinder, to your preschool, so they will have it tomorrow morning. And if you would like a list of these activities, you can just ask your uh, pre preschool head to forward this deck to you. So it will be in their inboxes tomorrow morning. So then you'll have a whole list of all these activities because I know we went through it very quickly um, and, um, and you could not write everything down. There's also a way on our YouTube channel where you can also rewatch this um, this webinar and you can even forward the link to someone else if there's somebody that you know that needs to see this this webinar. So let me go back to to this session. I would like to look at the Q and A's quickly um, to see. It's just opening up for me if there are any questions. Somebody is asking, will the recording of the webinar be available? Yes, it will be available. Um, as I said, uh, we will send all the details to your school. There is a YouTube channel where you can watch this and the deck will be available at your school tomorrow morning. You can just request it from your preschool head. It will be in their inbox tomorrow morning. Just give them time a little bit during the day, but you can request it from them. If there are any other questions, you're more than welcome to ask it now. Seems like we don't have any questions. So the bottom line of what we were discussing tonight is play with your child. Support play-based learning because that is so important and that's why it is such a good thing that you have your child in Kiro because play-based learning forms such a big basis of our ECD program. And through play-based learning, you are preparing your child for formal learning in the best way possible. And gross motor skills are embedded in play in, in, in play based learning. So it is so important that you will support that because cognitive development relies heavily on gross motor development. Cool. So everybody is asking for this presentation. I will send it tomorrow morning to the schools. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm Johan van Lul and I'm from the Kiro Learner Support Unit. Um, I really appreciate it that you took the time to join us tonight. Remember, we have a ECD 
parent webinar every Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. So I hope to see you next week and you can invite also other people to also join us. Um, I hope you found this useful and it was a huge privilege for me to share this time with you. Have a wonderful evening and goodbye from me.